we will start with DNA replication. DNA replication as we know it is a process of production of multiple copies of DNA. Basically as per your NCRT chapter we will be discussing about DNA replication in prokaryotes that is in Escherichia coli because it is a better understood mechanism. Um, here first we will be discussing about the enzymes required as I have already sent you a video there also you have seen the enzyme requires first one is helicase which is used for breaking down the hydrogen bonds between the two strands of DNA topoisomerase it is used to, uh, to break and reseal the strands of DNA that is used for releasing the tension and primase it is used for formation of the RNA primer. What is its function we will be discussing. Then DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is required um, for linking the free DNA nucleotides to form complementary strands of DNA. So in your book just DNA polymerase is mentioned but uh, you should also know that DNA polymerase is of many types and the different types of DNA polymerase have different functions in replication. The linking of the free DNA nucleotides to form the complementary strand of DNA is done mainly by DNA polymerase 3 in the prokaryotes and uh, polymerase delta in eukaryotes. Now, these are the different types of polymerases. Um, prokaryotes have three types of DNA polymerase, 1, 2 and 3. Eukaryotes have five types of DNA polymerase, alpha, beta, delta and epsilon. DNA polymerase 1 is used for proofreading and repair. How is it done? We will be discussing as we discuss the process in details. DNA polymerase 2 is also required for repair. DNA polymerase 3 actually takes part in replication that is polymerization of the deoxyribonucleotides. In eukaryotes, replication occurs with the help of polymerase delta and other types of DNA polymerases like beta is used for re repair, alpha is used for mitochondrial DNA repair, epsilon is uh, used for polymerase activity in HeLa cells. Now what are HeLa cells? Um, like for your just short notice we don't uh, need it in details but HeLa cells are some immortal cells, immortal line of cells. Um, these cells are generally used for research which were first uh, uh, isolated from cervical cancer cells uh, many years ago from a patient and uh, so these HeLa cells are the immortal line of cells. So this we uh, don't need much in details but um, alpha is used for uh, alpha has the same activity at, as the DNA polymerase 1 in prokaryotes. Beta has the same activity as DNA polymerase 2 in prokaryotes and delta has the same activity as DNA polymerase 3 in the prokaryotes. Now other enzyme required as we all discussed. Uh, we already discussed about primase, topoisomerase, helicases. The next is ligase. This ligase enzyme is used to join short sections of newly synthesized polynucleotide chains. Okay, and repair enzymes in this case are DNA polymerase 2. Now, when we discuss about replication, we first have to know about origin of replication. Now what is meant by this origin of replication? Um, better, uh, so as we are discussing about the prokaryotic cell, we all know that the DNA strand is a double-stranded structure. Okay, 
Now this double stranded structure, both the chains have polynucleotides. Both these strands are made up of polynucleotides. These are polymers which are made up of many nucleotides, deoxyribonucleotides linked together. Now there are certain regions of the DNA which are very rich in adenine and thymine. 80 rich regions are there. Uh, so replication always begins from one particular region on the DNA and that is called origin of replication or ORI origin of replication it starts as so origin of replication is the region of this DNA which will be identified by some initiator proteins which will be identified by some initiator proteins. Now this initiator proteins identify the origin of replication on the DNA from which replication will begin. So in prokaryotes there is just one origin of replication but in eukaryotes there are more than one origin of replication. That is um, uh, uh, in uh, eukaryotes many AT rich sequences, uh, AT rich regions are there on the DNA. In prokaryotes uh, there are there is just one origin of replication that is one region which is rich in adenine and thymine, highly rich in adenine and thymine. Uh, this is the region or, uh, from which the replication begins. So it is the origin of replication. Now in this place now uh, again for replication to start origin of rep as the origin of replication is very important activation of deoxyribonucleotide is also very important activation of deoxyribonucleotides now how are this deoxyribonucleotides activated there are four types of deoxyribonucleotides as we all know deoxy adenosine monophosphate then dgmp guanosine monophosphate dtmp dcmp so these are all monophosphates which are already present in the cytoplasm this needs to be activated sorry these are monophosphates present in the nucleoplasm this needs to be activated so this activation is done by phosphoric acid so this all reacts with phosphoric acid in presence of enzyme phosphorylase and they are converted to triphosphates so these are activated deoxyribonucleotides now how does this process initiate initiation of dna replication uh, starts from origin of replication which attracts enzymes so first enzyme that is attracted is helicase now what is this function of helicase as we all know that um, the two strands of dna are joined together by hydrogen bonds helicase starts breaking up the hydrogen bond the point which is recognized by that is in the origin of replication a first enzyme that is invited is the helicase enzyme it breaks down it starts breaking down the hydrogen bonds so enzyme helicase unwinds the dna helix and unzips the two strands of dna by breaking the hydrogen bonds now the separated strands now these two strands which are linked together which are coiled together the two strands which are coiled together when they start unzipping from this point suppose this is the point origin of replication when the two strands starts unzipping from this point opening up breaking up the hydrogen bond this separated strands um, there is always a tendency of the separated <coughs> strand to form the hairpins because nucleotides are present. 
the nucleotides of the same same strand as the hydrogen bonds are broken have a tendency to attract the nucleotides have a tendency to attract each other and they may form such hairpin like structures so to maintain these single stranded structures and so that this hairpin like structure does not form single strand binding proteins uh, come and attach to this strand single strand so that they can maintain this single stranded nature so single stranded binding proteins come and join here and another enzyme uh, which uh, helps in this opening up or uh, in this um, initiation of DNA replication is topoisomerase. So first helicase enzyme it starts breaking up the hydrogen bonds from this origin of replication then single stranded binding proteins come and join to this single strand so that these hairpin like structures do not form and these single strands are stabilized and next is the topoisomerase now this topoisomerase what is its function now topoisomerase the function is to cut and reseal the um, cut and reseal the single strands so that the tension is released now uh, how do we mean what do you mean by tension now, as you can see this is the coiling so we can imagine two ropes which are coiled very tightly together when you buy maybe um, uh, like uh, when you buy rope from market you see they are very tightly coiled together so when this uh, when we try to open these two coiled um, uh, strands of rope we always see that while we try to pull it from one side and we just release it we see again the recoiling starts suppose the two strands were there we have started opening it from here we again see after some time suppose the two strands were coiled very tightly now we have started opening it up from uh, the top we again see that if we just release it they again have a tendency to tightly coil with each other in this place if we just cut at certain sites we will see that the tension gets released um, if you don't understand it now better uh, these doubts can be addressed when the school reopen but just try to imagine it if the two ropes are tightly called we just try to pull them uh, uh, separate from each other then again there is a tension always building up that they have a tendency to coil so to break this tension topoisomerase enzyme it cuts the strands at places and then again reseals them this helps in releasing the tension between the two coil strands so topoisomerase enzyme has this function so unzipping creates a y-shaped configuration called the replication fork now suppose the two strands have started opening from here so replication it's the um, this structure that has formed here now first a replication bubble has formed when just the unzipping starts and then this strand starts opening up in this manner suppose this is one strand this is the other strand replication will take place always in one direction so when these strands open up and we just see it from one direction such a y-shaped replication fork forms this is the y-shaped replication form that is formed now here are the two strands of dna we see the topoisomerase has topoisomerase enzyme the single stranded binding protein the helicase enzyme now the two strands have opened unzipping has started now formation of the polymerase has to form uh, sorry formation of the new strands of dna has to form for this formation of new strands of dna first priming will be required now what do you mean by priming 
replication fork exposes two different ends of DNA, three prime end and the five prime end. At the free three prime end of one strand and the fork end of the second strand. Three prime end of one strand, fork end of other strand. This strand where the prime is binds at the where the primer is formed at the fork end is the strand with free five prime end. So at the free three prime end of one strand and the fork end of the second strand with free pi five prime end a small RNA is synthesized with the help of RNA polymerase. So here you can see small RNAs are synthesized. RNA primers. These primers have about 4 to 12 nucleotides. These primers are 4 to 12 nucleotides. Now why is this primer important? The primers are important. In the two strands, the primers are important because they provide RNA primers, RNA strands. So, they are also made up of ribonucleotides and they will provide a free OH. Okay, now this free OH helps in coming off like they provide the site for the first deoxyribonucleotide to attach. Deoxyribonucleotides, they will form a ester bond. So they provide the site for the first deoxyribonucleotide to attach. Later, these primers are removed again. Later, this prime as the chain starts forming, these primers are removed. They provide the free 3 prime OH. Suppose this is the RNA primer. At this end, there will be a 3 prime OHN. So, to this, the first deoxyribonucleotide will come and attach. So, this provides this site. Later, these primers will be removed and they will be replaced by some more deoxyribonucleotides. And that will take place with the help of DNA polymerase 1 during proof reading. So, this is what which occurs here. So, you can see here RNA primer. Now, this polymerase will join, will start attaching deoxyribonucleotides one after another. And this synthesis of deoxyribonucleotide will always take place in one direction. That is 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Now, synthesis of this ribonucleotides always take place in uh, 5 prime to 3 prime direction. When I say this here now, you see one strand, it has this 3 end here. So, the primer that will form in this strand will have 5 prime end here, 3 prime end here. The deoxyribonucleotides will now come and join here. So, to this 3 prime end, the 5 prime end of the deoxyribonucleotide will come and join. To this 3 prime end of the RNA primer, the 5 prime end of the deoxyribonucleotide will come and join. Now, for this you refer to the uh, previous day's class where I have sent some structures of deoxyribonucleotides and ribonucleotides. Will come and join here. So, this synthesis now again, this E5 prime end of the deoxyribonucleotide is present here. Then 3 prime end is again free. Again, the next one will come. This will again be joined here. 5 prime end again, this will be the 3 prime end. So, this synthesis is occurring in 5 prime, 3 prime direction. So, this synthesis will continue and such a continuous trend of DNA will form. But the case here is different. Now, this trend is opposite one has the 5 prime end here 